everybody on YouTube, this is Super Nintendo, and I'm in the shadows. Also, here's my guest. What's up, guys? This is Fear the Moons. And you'll never guess what we're talking about today. That's right, it's Dragon Ball Super Time! Which was clearly written and directed by uh, M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> Okay, um, I brought him on because he actually has, uh, positive opinions about Super for the most part, don't you? A uh, little bit. Yeah, so, like, some we're negative. gonna... Yeah, some negative, but, like, this way, it's not just me bitching about how bad Super is. And we got someone that I can work off of. You know? And, uh, I will be making a list or not list link to his video at the end of this one or not video his channel at the end of this one so without further ado let's get into this so um where should we start <laughs> um i guess we should start uh fear do you think that dragon ball super has any tension in it whatsoever Um, tension? Yeah, said, tension. Tension. Like, you don't know whether or not they're going to get out alive. Um, well, I, in my opinion, I feel like the Universe 7 is going to live. No, I, no, and, I mean through the whole show, not just the arc. I mean the whole show. Do you think that, do you, is there any point in this where you feel where you're, like, sitting on the edge of your seat, like, Oh my god, is this one of the times Goku's gonna die? Oh, uh, actually, one time I thought Trunks was gonna die in the Goku Black arc. I haven't... Maybe future Trunks, but, like, I... I cannot give a flying shit throughout the whole show because of where it takes place within the ten-year time skip, you know? Any character who doesn't show up kind of has, like, an iffy thing, but I don't know. It, it, I couldn't get invested. Um, so, do you feel that Dragon Ball Super accurately, that the characters have developed well in Super based on where, they, where we left them off in Dragon Ball Z? Um, uh, no. Goku's kind of dumb in a way like he doesn't he uh, always uh um he leaves his guard uh what he, he's all he doesn't um he doesn't act like the goku like we usually knew him like dragon ball z wise yeah he and feels Vegeta, like a, he he feels like a stereotype doesn't he, he he's the he's what yeah. he's what people who don't watch dragon ball think dragon ball is like for he's the he's the people He's what people who don't watch Dragon Ball think Goku is like. He's an idiot. He loves to fight. He abandons his family. He basically doesn't give a shit about them. Yep. What about Vegeta? Vegeta. Hmm. Let me think. Well, he, uh... The problem about him, uh... Well, I didn't like how he was acting all hockey against copy Vegeta like he thought he had him Vegeta didn't fight copy Vegeta oh I met Goku my bad but well, that, was, mind, that wasn't what, copy what Vegeta who was acting that that was that was uh copy Vegeta that was acting that way towards Goku oh all right um never mind um I was saying okay so Vegeta right yeah <clears throat> hmm does it matter any arc? No, throughout the whole show. Like, from the beginning oh. of Super to the end of it. Do you think it... Do you think he has developed well based on where we left him last in... Uh, before uh, the time skip? You know? I mean, he acts the same, and he still wants to be stronger than Goku, but the weird thing is that um, he doesn't get stronger than Goku. He's always, like, 
this close to Goku and then Goku just goes way higher. I feel like Dragon I feel like Dragon Ball Super completely hit rewind on Goku on Vegeta's character development where like Vegeta during the Boo fight is like uh oh you're better than me Kakarot you are number 1. But then Dragon Ball Super completely hits rewind on that shit and he's like like oh my god Kakarot has surpassed me and ah, ah, ah. I feel like Dragon Ball GT did this much better where um Vegeta acted he want he still did want to surpass Goku, but he wasn't gonna lose his shit if he never did it. He was perfectly yep. happy with being number two. And And on like Super has some good moments with him with like uh him going to like episode two where he takes his family to the park. And uh, the episode dealing with uh, Bola, or Bra, or whatever the fuck you want to call her, uh, his daughter being born, and like he won't go train for the tournament of power, and like like I'm gonna stay here because my wife is in labor, she's in pre she's pregnant, and then like getting all pissed off when uh, his uh, when the Z fighters are all like getting all uh, touchy feely with um. That's probably the wrong phrase for that. With his daughter, it's like, I gotta give her a name that is befitting a Saiyan warrior. It's like, nope, it's Bola, bitch. <laughs> I felt like that yeah. was pretty good. But for the most part, it, his character has just progressed to, I must, I must be better than Kakarot. And I felt like that is... There, Hale Zeon said it best, where it's like, nope, he can't be interesting unless he's playing catch up to Goku and he's riding Goku's dick. Yeah. Um, what do you feel about the other characters beyond the Saiyans, like the rest of the Z Fighters? Hmm, about the Z Fighters? Uh, yeah, the rest of them besides Goku and Vegeta. Beside Goku and Vegeta? Yeah, yeah, besides Goku and Vegeta. Well, in my opinion, I feel like Gohan should be stronger now, in my opinion, since he's training and stuff, like he was training with Piccolo and stuff. And Krillin, uh, I understand that he was like in retirement or something. Yeah, that, that's the uh, thing. A lot of them pretty much went into retirement. Like Tien, Tien was in retirement, wasn't he? No, he wasn't in retirement. He just never does anything. I think Yamcha was. Yeah, Yamcha's been in retirement since before the Boo arc, I think. Sometime during that seven-year time skip, he went into retirement. Yeah. And, um... Piccolo, um... He's still a good character. He's still awesome. It's just they never do anything with a lot of these characters. I feel is the problem. It's mostly yeah. They every, don't use Piccolo anymore. Yeah, everybody complains about GT and it, like how it's always the uh, Goku time. Like people make the joke that GT stands for Goku time because Goku's pretty much the only one who does anything in that show. But this one, it's mostly Goku and Vegeta. And uh, I would say um, Beerus. And we'll, we'll we'll get to them, but um, yeah, it's mostly it's mostly the Goku and Vegeta show. The spotlight is almost exclusively on them. Yep. And even then, Goku's the one who does most of this shit anyway. So, um, all right, let, let's talk about how do you feel about the gods? Hmm. Well. Uh, the, Beerus is God Destruction, and Whis is the angel, pretty much his assistant. Yeah. Um, I do... Whis kind of gets on my nerves in a way. Yeah. He's like, oh, I want I want something what... It's a splendous what Bulma makes him, you know? Yeah. Well, what were you going to say? Um, I, I kind of like them both. Um... But the there's a Beerus especially. He's supposed to be this threatening figure, and they ruin it by having him be all chummy with Goku and their gang. Where it was like it just comes off as oh, if these guys aren't powerful enough to do anything, we'll just get Beerus to do it. 
And, like, a lot of... The thing that bugs me is everybody keeps expecting... Oh, no, they wouldn't do that. They're not... It's not their place to butt in. They've done it multiple times, people. The, the Resurrection F arc. Uh, they fuck up. And Whis just rewinds time. And gives them a do-over. Uh... Battle of God, the fucking Future Trunks arc, uh, they they tap the fucking bullshit button and have Zeno show up and beat up a bad guy for them, and then Whis is like, oh, well, I'll just go to the Future Timeline and then rewind time and have Beerus kill uh, Zamasu before uh, he does what the hell he does, making the whole arc completely fucking pointless. Because you could have just done that shit from the beginning. Yep. Alright, like, okay, let's talk about the storytelling next. Uh, do you feel like Dragon Ball Super does good storytelling, or at least competent storytelling? Both on its own, and if you connect it to Z or whatever. No, it is not a good story. Yeah, it, it Where where in the it show bothers me because you know we don't even know how um oh how where did um all these characters come from? They they pretty much just asleep or they've always been there. Apparently. Yeah. How could how could we how could have we not known? And yeah. um and, okay, uh where where in the show do you think it finally picks up and gets enjoyable the goku arc goku black arc i would say that too problem is that's what 42 episodes in yeah and do you feel it's acceptable for any show to take 40 40 something episodes to get good um cuz a show if that you're you have a big to... dragon if if you're a big dragon ball fan uh go ahead but if you ain't if you're just there just to watch yeah don't waste your time no, just no. go to even, the even as a arc. dragon ball fan i feel like any any show doesn't matter if you're a fan of the fl- franchise or whatever any show that takes 40 something episodes to get even enjoyable not saying it's good or bad but enjoyable If you can't wow your audience within the first two episodes, why fucking bother? Yep. And the one thing they're messing up with, they keep doing it weekly. Yeah, that that too. And they won't take their time like they did with Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball and GT. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT, they didn't necessarily take their time, but they tried to make the episodes look um pretty good for the time periods um dragon ball super isn't it is it like even if you dragon ball super has no fucking clue what the hell they're doing animation wise and it doesn't even get like people say like the the animation didn't even get good until the goku black arc i think that's stretching it because there isn't like the average animation that they have is still fucking terrible. The Goku Black one is probably the best animation out of them. For some of the fights, like there, there's there's some fights in there that look god fucking amazing. But only they actually when, took their time on that arc. Oh, but only when you compare it to what what else is there in Dragon Ball Super. If you compare any fucking fight in here with something from like my hero academia during their tournament arc or whatever it shits all over this yeah it's just oh and by the way i'm not writing anything for him in case you guys are wondering he this is all his opinion uh for for everything he's saying so don't think i'm telling him what to tell what to say um just wanted to clear that up in case somebody decides to comment about that but um yeah, it's Toei. Get your fuck. They have more than enough money. I feel like to make this show good. And like, I feel like nobody would really give a shit 
if they okay after every arc they take a few months to a year off to work on the story to get the funds they need uh, excuse me uh to get the funds they need to uh make the show look and flow as good as possible and they don't do this it, it really the tournament of power arc okay let's talk about that what are your feelings on that so far? Tell, tell me about the, the the one is ongoing. Yeah, the arc that's currently going through. Um, I like it. Um, the problem is that when is it gonna end? Exactly, it's going on way too fucking long. And in, in every episode, I've seen oh, 18 minutes left in the tournament. Then you see episode oh, 15 minutes left in the. Yeah, that, that, that necessarily doesn't bug me. What bugs me is they're when... Just, they're just doing that because they want to keep going with the show. Well, also, these characters move so fast. People forget about... people. Well, people rather don't forget the five-minute fight thing that they have on Namek. And um, yeah. people forget about this part, though. Frieza says somewhere, I think it's in the manga, that he can only maintain his 100% form for like two minutes. So, most of that five-minute fight that consists of the 100% Final Form Frieza fighting against Super Saiyan Goku, that's only like two minutes. Um, real time. And what bugs me about the Tournament of Power, though, is when you got, say, when you got battles, it feels like every other fight just fucking stops. It, it pauses to have these two assholes fight each other and it's like uh, what the hell like the whole um like goku versus jiren in, in in that uh two episode special thing they had pretty much every other fight fucking paused just so they could have these guys fight each other and we don't see enough of the other fighters fighting each other. We don't have to focus on Universe 7. We could focus on... We could show, say... Um, what is it? Hit fighting somebody else and not have anyone from Universe 7 fucking show up. Like that episode where Hit is fighting Dispo. And uh, Goku just shows up in his red god form for no fucking reason. What the hell? Just, oh my god. And how, what was it? This arc has been going on since like episode 80 or something? Yep. Wait, was it? No, not episode 80. Actually, it was um episode 90 something. Let me, let me look that up real quick. Um, where'd my phone go? I think go? the arc's been going on for 30 some episodes now. I don't even know where the hell my phone went. Oh, here it is. Um, let me look that up real quick. Um, tournament of Power. Um, uh, when, when the fuck did it start? Casualties. Background. No, I don't want the background. I want the fucking episodes. Wait, what? This episode, this arc, has been going since episode 77. Really? Oh my god. Since what episode? Since episode 77 and it's going through episode 131. That's that's the episode that the whole fucking show stops pretty much. Holy crap. How many fucking episodes is that? Like no joke. How how many episodes is that? That's a lot. Is that the most episodes they ever made in art in their whole arcs, like Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball? That's 
54 fucking episodes. 54 episodes. And more oh than... Oh my gosh. Yeah, and here's the thing. More than half of this has been just fucking build up. Like, we had the... Uh, the we had Goku showing up. That's the first episode of this is where he gets like the fucking um, bullet thing that makes no fucking sense. Um, where he gets hurt by the like Goku gets hurt hurt by a bullet. Um, you got uh, the Goku uh, the the fucking tournament the the uh, little pre- preliminary de- tournament where you got. Gohan, Goku, and Boo fighting the Trio de Dangers. Trio de Dangers. Um, who everybody fucking points out looks like the Sonic the Hedgehog characters, by the way. Because you got one that's red, one that's yellow, and one that's blue. And, and stuff like that. Um, it, it's fucking awesome. Uh... Okay, do you think that... Okay, you know what bugs me? There's a bunch of stuff that bugs me about this arc. What? Okay, one, they they did this thing where it's like, oh, there's only like 34 planets left in Universe 7 that have any life on them. Um... <sighs> bullshit! You know, because like, they specifically said like, Planet Vegeta, Planet Sadala and planet Namek were all destroyed. What about the other fucking planets? And on top of that, fuck you for even saying this, because, like, Universe 7 and Universe 6 are twin universes, right? So they should theoretically have uh, the same type of life forms within them. Where's the Universe 7 version of Hit? Where's the Universe 7 version of Hit's race? Where's the Universe 7 version of uh, Botamo's race? Or Megiddo? Where is their versions? And on top of that, you don't think that the fucking copy Vegeta people would be useful to have in this tournament? They could absorb people and basically take their power. I can, we don't need to have everyone on Universe 7 being people everybody already knows. We don't need Tien. We don't need fucking Krillin. We don't need uh, Master Roshi. As cool as it is to have them in there, we don't fucking need them. You seriously fucking telling me that there isn't anybody stronger than Master Roshi. Yep. And on top of that, the Supreme Kai's, their whole fucking job is to make new planets and provide them with life. They haven't been doing their job. Why are they still fucking in charge? Why are they still there if they're not doing their job? They could they bitch about Beerus all the time for being fucking lazy and like sleeping all the damn time but it's your fucking job to make new planets and provide them with life why haven't you been doing that why (laughs) all right all right let's um talk let's talk about uh lore and how well Dragon Ball Super as a whole fits in to the continuity. All right. Do you feel like Dragon Ball Super adds anything to the Dragon Ball lore? What do you mean, like? Lore uh, there, the, the whole story. Do you feel like Dragon Ball Super adds anything to anything we didn't know about before? Um, yeah. Anything that is actually, like, anything that isn't just, oh, there's gods we didn't know about. Uh, Pretty much, yeah. They've uh, put stuff that we don't even know how it, you know, started. 
that's not what I mean. I mean, I mean anything like, like Dragon Ball Z. We got the Saiyans. We we got the reveal that Goku was a Saiyan. We got the Super Saiyan legend. We got the Supreme Kai's. We got the King Kai. We got all. We got so much more into how the afterlife works. Dragon Ball GT. As much as people hate on it, we got more credence to what that warning was that Supreme Kai told Goku and the others about the Dragon Balls. Like, don't use the Dragon Ball so much. If you yeah. do that, we get the super. We get the fucking Shadow Dragons. Does Dragon Ball Super do anything like that? Uh, nope. I feel it doesn't either. And every time it tries to, they just fuck it up by either introducing something that contradicts something or they add in something that doesn't make any sense. Like, they they tried to, um, like, the whole uh, Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken thing. Yeah. The, it's cool that they finally explained something in Super by that point. But their explanation as to why Goku can suddenly use it, again, with a transformation, and, and how it works with the new transformation, doesn't make any fucking sense. Like they oh, got... let them know we're going to do a, a TMNT Season 1 review. Well, you just said it. Um, yeah, we... Uh... <laughs> sometime later, sometime we are going to talk about T the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2012 Season 1 and the rest of the seasons as well. Um, I'm right now four I'm seasons on Season in. 4. I'm four seasons in. I want to say halfway through the season. He's just somewhere in the middle, in the or not middle, somewhere in the beginning I'm on of season episode four. Two. I'm pretty beginning, basically. Yeah. Um. We could probably record the rest of the TMNT. I think we could probably do it after this video, really. All right. Um. But yeah, everything Dragon Ball Super brings up doesn't make any. Wait, fucking... can I say something? Yeah. I kind of want to. Um. Well, you know when, okay, so, people are really, like, going, like, oh, how did Goku get, um, Ultra Instinct? Or, or they'll go, like, oh, how did he get K.O. Ken when his body cannot take that much, especially in Super Saiyan Blue form? Yeah. And how is he actually using it now? Yeah, my... How is his body not hurting itself now? It is hurting itself, but what they the way they explain it is um, Super Saiyan Blue uses less stamina than normal Super Saiyan. Um, normal Super Saiyan doesn't use any stamina, and I know I bitched about this in my rant, but um, D Super Saiyan Goku in the Cell games, he stayed in there. If we be generous and say he figured out the full power Super Saiyan shit six months into his year-long training in the hyperbolic time chamber, right? Yep. Him and, Go him and Gohan stayed in Super Saiyan form for six months and a whole week, not to mention the whole fucking Cell games, and they... Um, if it was using up that much stamina then they wouldn't be able to stay Super Saiyan for that fucking long. Yep. Um, and on top of that, even if you wanted to say, oh, well, they powered down for when they were sleeping or something, um, the characters, Vegeta, Piccolo, uh, Trunks, they all looked at Goten, or Goku and Gohan and said, um... I can't feel any energy from them at all. It's as if they're in base form, but w looking at them, they're clearly Super Saiyans. Yep. That fucking tells me there ain't no stamina drain whatsoever. Yep. And um, on top of that, they straight up, like, go the whole reason Goku wasn't using Super Saiyan Blue throughout the whole fucking tournament was... 
Oh, Super Saiyan Blue, it rides on my stamina. And we see this with Vegeta. He uses Super Saiyan Blue against Kaba for literally one punch. Transforms out of it, then transforms back into it. And he gets rocked by hit. Goku yep. does the same shit. And he can combine Kaioken with it, which already... Even it with base form, it drains your stamina like crazy. Adding Super Saiyan Blue on top of that makes it seem more like the reason why he can do it is because of the energy control of Blue. And if they just said the energy control, that would have been fine. But no, in the Japanese version, they specifically state it's because of the stamina. Yep. And that creates a fucking problem. Like, Super Saiyan Blue, Kaioken, as they explained it, could not be a thing. They just add it in because it's cool, and they don't come up with a good reason as to why it works. Yeah, they only did it because it was cool. Like, even if even in Dragon Ball Z, with the, with the um, other world tournament, um, Goku uses... Uh, the Super Kaioken.